Think all the people whom are sharing and, and getting their Facebook accounts banned because they share too much and alhamdulillah <laughs> that take those accounts, share them, take the video, share them, take the articles, share them and alhamdulillah Allah dress you and bless you inshaAllah with infinite mercy. Take the charity site any of the, the packages from the charity, the well, share it on social, social media so that they can click and go directly to that item, that zakat, that sadaqah, that well, that water, the food, all of these things so that we can make a difference, inshaAllah. Leave comments on the videos, the algorithms, everything goes up because of the comments and the interaction inshaAllah. Leave a summary of what you understood from the talks. It's always interesting to come back and to see what people pick up because everyone picks up what's needed for their heart. Take your bullet points uh, if you're not transcribing the talk entirely at least you have bullet points to that to remember that talk was based on this and it helps the people whom are browsing and thinking if they want to watch or listen then they look at the bullet points say, oh this is something interesting and inshaAllah we'll go and listen to it. So everything counts, everything in Allah's way counts, nothing in Allah's way is wasted or small. We don't know what ni'mat opens, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As When connecting my heart to my shaykh I feel a slight sharp pain in my heart. Is this a sign of the connection of a dirty rusty heart? It's a sign that there's a sharp pain in your heart. What don't kill you make you stronger, don't worry. Any energy comes, anything comes, it's all good. If you're dead, you go back to Allah don't worry. If not, inshaAllah you got stronger. As Salaamu Sayyidi if someone has experienced the same out-of-body experience many times from childhood to adulthood, should they share this with the shaykh or would that be too nafsani? Walaykum as uh, too nafsani. There's no need to share these things with the shaykhs. Just need to master your muraqabah if you have… Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have the ability to leave the body, then that should be an easier state to achieve. If you have dreams of leaving the body then maybe it's an asharat and a, a guidance to you that you have that potential. If you have dreams of seeing yourself flying means you have that potential. So all of it is importance is based on make your foundation. So we're building a house and every email comes in, uh, I want to make the walls like this. I want the windows to be like this, I want the roof to be like this. All of that is great but none of that is any concern until you tell me how you built your foundation. So until people understood that their foundation solid, they got the concrete, they poured the concrete, they check look we poured the concrete it's all solid. Now we're ready to frame, we're going to put the frame, everyone has a step. So can you ask me about the roof when you don't even have the foundation? No, doesn't make any sense. We could talk all we want about the windows but if you didn't build the foundation 
then means something is, is distracting you from the foundation. If you build the foundation and make that connection then a lot of this would have been answered because then you would have read the book, you would have been eager to find out what is this like a near-death experience. Some people had a lot of near-death experiences that guided them to the tariqah that every time sleep they were like dying. So natural yearning was then to read, what is this? What part of Islam understands death and the afterlife was definitely not the Wahhabis. So the, the overwhelming control of the Islamic community were very extreme. So they don't really have anything to do with spirituality and everything was very frightening. So then those are the gifts Allah gives to people they seek out the spiritual ones, they're going to answer those types of questions. So people whom have a, a spiritual affinity, Allah has given that to them so they eat the right dish. Because you go to the Wahhabis that's not the dish that answered any of your hunger. So, wow these guys were crazy, they were angry, aggressive, violent. I told you we go to masjid, you come out they were beating up the homeless people. So what kind of Islam was this? Those homeless people were like birds coming to take the sadaqah from Jummah so that your Jummah would be accepted. So Allah puts within the yearning of spiritual people that there's only a certain food that will sustain you, seek out these shaykhs from these realities. So then they learn the process, they read the book, they learn how to make the foundation, they're solid in their foundation. They're solid in the connection with the shaykh, the rest is going to be answered because they're connected now with the shaykh, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As we are not to correct anyone, is it still okay to speak to our adult children and correct them? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that's again you get extreme, people are going like left and right. Uh, like when I remember when we started started or something, we had to, at the, the center get something and there's an individual at the center who would always do everything extreme. <laughs> if, if two things were good he would go get ten of them. But that, that, that's not how it is, you have to go based on the teaching. We say, don't comment to anyone but we never said that about and you have to discipline them otherwise those children will be like werewolves in your home. You no know, hair growing and attacking you by 12 years old. So <laughs> we didn't teach that. So you see how the people take things and go to extremes. It's very clear when we say, don't make comments to people is that you don't have to fight and argue. You go to a relative's house, be ready, we gave a talk, it's like a chess game, oh I know when I go this one relative is going to ask me about something to agitate me, ignore and go prepared. You're gonna go out somebody, someone wants to say something, try to keep your cool and to avoid. And you're at work and you think you always have to keep commenting and until it becomes aggressive take a path in which you stay silent. But. Uh, Coming and saying, I'm going to make dinner now and I'm not going to ask anyone a question, I'm, you know, how, you're not going to make anything that anybody wanted to eat. So this note to that extreme where now I'm not going to talk anymore to anyone, I'm not going to tell anyone anything. But everyone should know in their common sense when they should remain silent. When you feel and you'll feel in your heart that if you're sincere your heart gets very nervous because it has a, a system been rigged now by the heavens. When you start to talk when you're not supposed to your heart is beating with a sign that stay silent, stay quiet. So you'll see your own alarm systems are very active within ourselves if we build the practices. That you feel uncomfortable talking stop at that point. If you're entering into a place where your heart is not going to be comfortable, not going to be happy with this aggression and ag aggressiveness. So we have to become in tune with ourselves and, and learn, you know, the, the course of avoiding arguments for the sake of damaging the heart. You know, to raise your children of course you have to raise them, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi 
Walaikum salam Please forgive me for my ignorance. Uh, when we do Salat al Istikhara, how to know what is the right action, decision to take after the prayer? Yeah, you don't have to do Salat al Istikhara. That's an option for you on the people whom don't train with their madad. So, that again, you must be coming new because you have to come to the practices, do your meditation, do your connection and that's the best istikhara. Is that istikhara means to ask for guidance from the Qur'an but that's if you don't have a shaykh. When you have a shaykh you have to lay the foundation, make your connection. As soon as you make your connection start asking your question, what am I to do and give me an inspiration. And inshaAllah with your zikr, with your practices, with your salawat you feel that your heart is being inspired. Through dunya if you have questions help me at nurmuhammad.com. Doesn't mean it will be answered right away and they're not going to be answered in the way that you want it to be answered, it will be answered in the way that's necessary to be answered. But in a society of people whom they think everything is like McDonald's that you ask for fries and, and, a, and a burger you're going to get fries and a burger, tariqah is different. You ask for fries and a burger and we give you a cup of water. You get what you need not what you want. That's why the replies come back and people say, this is not what I asked. I said, didn't matter what you asked but this is what you needed to hear. Do this practice, do it really well and these issues will be resolved, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam If someone has marked themselves before joining tariqah and they regret it immensely, are they not going to have a good ending? Please forgive me. Yeah, I think they've emailed this many times. If you mark yourself and you know that Allah is not happy with that by virtue of these teachings, when you came to Islam Allah forgave sins of the past. So everyone has a point in which they, if they came to Islam and then marked themselves then they have to think to themselves, okay I'm asking forgiveness, I gave zakat for my forgiveness and do I have means in which to correct this? And we have a talk describing, it's interesting the fire of removing tattoos is more painful than the process of putting tattoos, that should be a symbol for people. If you think by fire they have to remove the tattoo and that hurts, well the angels their lasers are far more painful in the grave because they're going to remove it. Because I don't think there's any hadith of tattooed people walking in paradise. So it means either you get the laser now or you get it in the grave. If you're uncomfortable with keeping it on then you have an option. You go get the, the laser to remove it. If it's not removable, which I don't think there are any, I have videos of people removing from their face. Then you, you paid your, your zakat, you paid sadaqah to it, you've asked for repentance and leave the rest to Allah But you know we do what we can to correct the errors of the past and we try our best to correct those errors. And then going forward to do good and to counsel people in goodness and to help people from doing such things to themselves that would cause them great regret. But Allah in the end is Qafur Rahim, is immensely merciful and loving. So everyone then has their own struggle of what they want to correct and what they prioritize as their love. So we described before, you cover your hair out of love, not fear of Allah. If you do anything out of fear shaitan will play with you and think, oh you're a big one now, don't have to fear. You can transgress these laws and these rules and that's not the way to approach. From all our teachings of awliyaullah whom we've been with and under their guidance is that go by love, do what you can do for love. 
Ya Rabbi I love you immensely, I'm great, grateful for the amazing grace you have bestowed upon me. Out of love I will do this thing for you, out of love I will uphold this religion. And then you compete in your love always to do more because love calls for you to do more, love doesn't diminish. So, oh yeah I love you before but now okay well uh, I'll do less. But love makes you to want to grow in your faith and in your practices. So out of love if you wish to remove something then that becomes the pain of love, love and the heartbreak of love. So this is a, a noble act that to remove something from love, for love of Allah love for Prophet so anything that we choose to do in life then we should do it based on the ishq and muhabbat of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa What if you feel like you used to be a sincere believer but your sincerity is being eroded in the context of life's hardships? Is the situation hopeless because my hope is flagging? Nothing's hopeless that in life's hardship there's a great reward. So listen to the talk. Every day have the, the videos on an autoplay that every morning you, you watch a sobat and motivate yourself before you go out into, into the world or before you sleep from this world. And do your salawats throughout the day to give you strength and proximity to the presence of Prophet And then to know that the, the fight belongs to us and victory belongs to Allah It means even in our training don't do anything for the victory. So you, you don't do your practices saying, I want my eyes to be open, I want this to happen, I want that to happen because you, you're, you're giving yourself what your victory is going to be. But our life is to fight and struggle and that's what Allah wants from us is put on a good fight and to Allah belongs the reward because only Allah knows what the reward is and what the victory is. You, we give the example before, said you're going to conquer, you're going to conquer Constantinople. He went and thousands of his men perished, but he got angry at his shaykh. So I thought you're going to conquer Constantinople, you told me I'm going to be the one who conquers. He said, I didn't tell you when, means put up a fight, go back out there, it's not your business. It's Allah knows who's the victory and those men who perished, oh they all became great shaheeds. They, they got the paradise station they needed, they wanted all their life. What do you think they were fighting for you, you to, to become the king and, and to eat from your family, the court of the kingdom? No, everyone is struggling. Allah knows what the rewards are and the gift is. So our life is about struggle. Anyone who struggles in life then say that I'm doing that for Allah for keeping my faith and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad from the money I raise, I want to give to charity, I want to feed people, I want to do good actions. I want to propagate the love of Prophet it makes every day I work sweeter. That I work, I walk, I do all these difficulties so that I can go out and give some food and, and share some articles and share the love of Prophet and makes your life's accomplishments very beautiful and they become sweet in the way of Allah and you're trying your best to accomplish and we gave the du du'as. Dua that we use all the time, ufa'udu amri in Allah, in Allah basirun bi libad. It's in our fajr, O Rad, that verily Allah you see my condition and that's enough for you to be aware Allah sees you. But do you see Allah Is you feel a consciousness that Allah sees your condition and if He feels that you see Him and, you, and He sees you. Inshaallah he changes the condition of his servant when they change what's within themselves. So once we begin to be conscious of the condition and, and make our salah see the beautific struggle in life and that what am I struggling for, for this deen, for this love, for this way, then hardships begin to move away because Allah changes the condition only if they change what's within themselves. So when the self changes the conditions become immensely beautiful. But now everybody wants change condition but not themselves. 
They go on the street and they want everybody's hijab off. But that's not you change the world, change yourself. And when you change yourself everything around you should be changed. Allah can move you into a different universe and you wouldn't even know it. This ajeeb. Hmm? Your vibration changes. In the layers of your existence because you don't know them, you vibrate. As a result of your vibration the existence you see, these ten people are your opponents. You change your vibration, you change with your zikr, your love, your ishq in a way that you can't understand your vibration changed you into a different dimension and in that dimension those ten don't exist anymore. In the subtlety of energy and the subtlety of religion, in the subtlety of this way of light that through veils people are moving and they can only move the veil based on the frequency. So he described, shaitan knows that. So he takes your frequency, so why you don't put that horrible music that cursing, 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 put on your ear and before you know it your frequency dropped and you went into a different dimension where now there are many more demons all of a sudden. This demon coming from this, this demon coming from that, all, all these demons coming that they weren't around my home before, where, what happened? Because you, you went into a, a dimension and a reality from your lower vibration. And if you increased your vibration what does it mean when Allah says, I don't change a condition? Means everything around had to change because you changed yourself. If you make tafakkur you think that, well Allah individually change each person because I changed myself, that's a lot of work. All their destinies, all of their things have to change. But you're living on a vibration, on an infinite level of planes. You increase your vibration, you don't even know the subtlety of your movement into a dimension and that dimension at your higher frequency everything is different, everything much more beatific and you keep moving through these pages, pages, pages. You begin to look at your life, I don't even know how I lived these 40 years, it seems like there were other lifetimes. But if you lower your vibration you find yourself in a dimension which is much more difficulty, much more evilness and wickedness. And our life is, is about the movement through the frequency, increase the frequency through the salawats. What's the fastest way of increasing your frequency is the muraqabah, why? Because they're… and they're powers. So now people are sending links. Oh there's a guy who made a YouTube and he shows a device, he turns the frequency device, all of a sudden a portal begins to open. We know it is true or not true, it doesn't matter but this is our teachings. Prophet described, sit in the portals of paradise, don't pass them. But because the paradise frequency is not visible to the human eye. It's not visible to the human eye, it's visible to the, the heart of the believer whom their house, their qalb is the house of Allah If they come with their belief and the, the frequency from their heart they would see the hadith that the khatams and zikrs they are a portal right above them with all the shaykhs are sitting all above them. In a dimension that's free from our dimension, you can't put your hand into it but that dimension can affect this dimension. So these are portals but because of the heavenly frequency so high and so powerful we don't have eyes in which to see. 
because these eyes can only see a certain frequency unless the heart is vibrating at a much more powerful frequency. If the heart vibrates at a more powerful frequency means you tuned it up, you went from your Honda to your Bugatti, your heart now is, is supercharged, requires completely different fuel, your zikr is completely different because you're burning energy at a completely different rate. As a result everything that you hear and see from that energy field is completely different. And that was the hadith, hadith al-Qudsi that you did your mandatory, now you did your voluntary, I became your eyes. I became your ears, I became the hands in which you move, means the power that that servant has and the ability for them to see the frequencies, they can see these portals. So shaitan wants to also entice his people that, I can give you portals too, let's make these electronic devices that, that alter the fabric and the electrons in the atmosphere. And they'll begin to play with these things and move with these things. But Prophet gave to everyone, says, the greatest portal that will open in the time of Sayyidina Mahdi right before these times come because they have to safeguard people, is in the power of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That when the servant with sincerity, because this is the teaching, everything, all of Holy Qur'an is in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. But why Allah didn't give them the key? Because they didn't reach that sincerity. If they reach the sincerity Allah give them the key of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. What happens in the day? Mawlana Shaykh would teach and the awliya have seen, they say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, a portal opens for them, they step. They see where they're stepping to. And now they show it on movies. All of a sudden something opens and it looks like the desert in Egypt for example. They merely walk into it, they're in desert. This is haqiqat al They can fold two points and move. Means at that time when they open that key, they come to you in a shuddered from your shaykh, they say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, a veil will open and you see Damascus Sharif. You see exactly where you're supposed to be stepping into, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, you step into it, you're out of that dimension and into another location. So when they want to know how people will be safe, well can somebody shoot somebody like that? No. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem they move and they're completely in a different location. So people want to know how that's going to happen and there's many ways on how Allah is going to open onto this earth. How are they going to avoid a nuclear attack? Well that's assuming you're locked in one place. But if Allah give to them the keys of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, immediately they open for them step through. And they step, they're not even in that vicinity and they don't even have to be upon this earth, they can step right into Mars if it's needed. So it means Allah's powers are great, the servant is limited, the frequencies are many. Life is about raising your frequency. So when you connect with the shaykh, he can bring from a heavenly frequency that nowhere near something you can touch because it's not something you can get. So you need something from that paradise box and as a result of bringing it present with you, its vibration and its energy is so powerful begin to send that energy, right? So now for the imitated they have to go get a box from a manufacturer or order this box, put this box and play its frequency and hope something opens for them because they're also in need but they're going to buy artificial equipment to do that. But what Allah's teaching for the servants is that everything from Allah is made within His creation. We don't need a box, you need a shaykh. And you need a shaykh with a high frequency. As a result of the shaykh, then cool upon them, make your heart connect with them. As a result, their energy comes and begins to smash your frequencies and push you into higher vibrations. And that there, as a result, they can relieve difficulties from people. In one abode, they have many difficulties or maybe sicknesses. 
if that energy comes and the vibration come, they push them into a different hijab, a different veil and in that existence they don't have that sickness. We pray Allah give us more and more understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam So is our shaykh our nucleus and the murid are the electrons with negative energy? Please forgive me Sayyidi. Sure I think we, we have that in the talks that the shaykh re represents the nucleus because he's from the nucleus and that's why they call the shaykh the Kaaba and the Qibla. Right? That which you circumambulate, you don't worship, you don't worship the Kaaba. So you're not bowing down to stones, otherwise you're a stone worshiper. So it means what? It, it holds for you a direction. What's holier? A stone house or something Allah built with His two hands? So it means the shaykh represents that, that focus in life. As a result he represents the nucleus which has the power. So when you're the electron means you're in a negative state circumambulating this power of the Divinely Presence. And the, the power has to come from the nucleus to hit the electron so that it can jump a ring and come closer. So these are you know they're very deep realities we have on the atoms and you go to the Muhammadan Way website, the main website, our only website and you, you Google and search, not Google, you search in the engine the atoms and the reality of the atoms and there are many talks on that. That anything from the nucleus think about it as the shape and anything from the nucleus its ultimate reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah and ultimate reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is that Allah is upon the heart of His believer. Because say, where's Allah in all of that? Allah is on the heart of His believer, qalb al-mu'min baytullah. So the real baytullah is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and this is Izzatullah, the might and majesty of Allah and all creation circumambulates Muhammadun Rasulullah and La ilaha illallah is in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.